It's been a while, Braxton. We're here with Richard Shelton. Hey, man. Thank you for having me. Drove up from Corpus. Fleeing a hurricane, we hear. We don't know. We don't have no hurricanes up here. Uh, we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. This live stream is brought to you by GBT Property Management and... And... Richard Shelton? Yep. <laughs> RichardMShelton.com. What's up, Richard? Hey, man, what's going on? Nothing. How's business? Hey, business is going pretty good. How about you guys? Oh, it sucks. It sucks? It's oh. fucking terrible. Okay. It's horrible. Right. What, what would you say? It's a weird time. It's a weird, Real weird time. time. <laughs> okay. It's very weird. Very weird. Um, well, we've we've implemented some things. We've got some follow-up going. Good. We've got our agents on a follow-up call. You can watch that previous video on the Roughneck Real Estate YouTube channel. You scroll back and watch our agent follow-up call that we did today. That's that's netting pro positive results, wouldn't you say? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's it's doing what it needs to do. It's just it does make you think. Probably should have done it sooner early, uh, as well. Yeah, there's well, never a, a right time to start that, you know. Yeah, I, you know, it's just definitely needed now. Oh no! Now that we know, no, mm -hmm. you know, we had some agents that were just making up stuff on their spreadsheet. Okay, we won't name names, but it's Michael. <laughs> and then we found that out on the first day of whenever we went on the call. Mm -hmm. And we're reading the follow-up, and then we're calling these people because, you know, complaints, objections. Sure. All the things. Sometimes you treat a complaint like it's an objection, and you don't get around it. So we jumped on the calls with them, and uh, what was written out there did not match what the agent said at all. And then I think we ended up getting a deal done. I don't know. Oh, yeah. um, we sent her over. That's the one that's uh, going to Hedgerow. Mm. So, anyways, long story short. It's been it's been productive because now there's accountability and that's all it really took. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bring it bringing it to attention holds people a lot of accountability right there. Uh, if you can call them out on the BS, it uh, it creates a little bit of uh, like oh wait a minute they're actually looking. Yeah. Oh, they're actually looking. <laughs> uh -huh. They're gonna check yeah. this later. Yeah, every industry I've been in, that's been the the same kind of gig. I mean, it's uh, you know the the salespeople will tell you what they think you want to hear then when you go and hop on the phone and start doing it for them then miraculously the story changes oh and i wouldn't been able to get a hold of them i haven't been able to do oh okay but i call them first call first ring and answers it's yeah I'm, I'm just not that lucky you're just not doing it oh that's all it is <laughs> and so we implemented the double dial the selfie video yeah um we, we're getting a little more creative with it um we're getting known in the marketplace because i mean look people know that we're we're going to call them i mean we even got one old caleb over in waco Mm -hmm. We heard it real estate agent's feelings. Heard it bad. Oh, yeah? Well, that's okay. He was on a showing appointment. Right? Is that what you gathered? <laughs> I, I think he was setting one or had one. I think he had one already, and we were following up for feedback. Okay. So he had already showed our property, and the feedback was um, something about the electrical and air conditioning, a couple little things. Mm -hmm. So I called him as the owner, said, hey, look, we're good to go. We can fix anything. And uh, whenever I called him, he didn't answer. So I called him twice and I sent him a selfie video. In the meantime, Big Mike, because it's this all on Google Sheets. Yeah. So they go to other people's showings on the sheet and they grab them because they got a similar property to sell. Yeah. And they call them. Well, Big Mike had triple dialed him. So Big Mike hit him with a triple dial. I hit him with a double dial and a selfie video. And he didn't see any of that. He come out of his showing and I was the first person he called. And he's like, are you on this team that's called me five times while I'm on a showing appointment? And I'm like, Lord, I hope so. <laughs> Lord, I hope so. But anyways, we had an interesting conversation with him. I don't know if he'll do business with us, but like I said in the post, those people ain't going to be in business much longer. Yeah. I mean, didn't we get mad or they'll get better? One of the two. I don't know. I mean, and then I looked at this guy's volume. He does $5 million a year, which is very respectable in Waco. Very respectable. Um, I don't know if he'll be able to maintain that, but could be a pay cut. Everybody gets a pay cut every now and then in life sometimes they might be out over their skis with their bills and could be adding some extra stress and he's got people calling him five times to try to get him paid you know what i mean yeah Wor worries people yeah, yeah but <laughs> people crack me up when they're worried about making money you know <laughs> <laughs> i'm just trying to get you paid man you know, I'm, you know it's not personal i'm just trying to we're trying to get me paid you paid everybody on here to be a winning team That's well to reference it's okay if they you know are afraid of making money it's yeah. just funny whenever they get upset about you following up no, oh, yeah. It's like, yeah, well, yeah. Hold on, you're, you're, you're stressed my, about this. Yeah, if my follow-up game is better than yours, you know, you're, you're not the professional you think you are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I was, I was like, look, he, he was telling me I needed to sit down and talk to my agents, and when he's saying all that, and I was like, so let me get this straight: you want me to go admonish my agents mm -hmm. for calling you too much to try to sell the listings that I gave them? 
that's that's what you want me to do right now? And he's like, well, you know, you just got to. And I was like, I just got to do business. You know what I mean? Like, I don't I don't know, <laughs> know about you, but I'm trying to get paid. I'm trying to make money. I'm trying to trying to do business. Like, Last market and forwarded to a cell phone. <laughs> oh god no nah, I, I, I don't want to do that yet but but so so you're doing you're doing really well like so i i think this month we're probably going to have the best month we've had in a while oh, that's awesome um we sold two recently mm -hmm. okay. just bought one um sold two we've got a lot of inventory that's hitting the market oh i love it, love it. here directly get a um, couple under contract now too yeah that's that's what i'm saying so we got oklahoma under contract um our canyon lake okay mm -hmm. Um, we got Texas under contract. Buck Holtz. Buck Holtz. Um, there you go. There's more. White Rock coming. White Rock's getting a contract. No, sorry, uh, Hedgerow. Hedgerow. Oh. I was like, so. Anyways, we've got a lot. We've got a lot that um, that's under contract and will close. Um, uh, Montana. Montana's mm -hmm. still perfect, limping along. Um, Tennessee Trail's about to get an offer. Got that one coming today. Mm -hmm. um, so, anyways, I mean, we got a lot going on, but. Overall, I mean, the market's just, I mean, if you're not willing to work in it, it's very difficult. Y'all, y'all, what kind of inventory are you floating with right now? I mean, most of our inventory is short-term inventory. We got, uh, you know, the stuff that we're holding on to, we're, we're turning pretty quick. We're doing a lot of hotels at the moment. Uh, so we close about 99% of our contracts. I wholesale very little, uh, but they are a lot of hotels. So they might be in and out in a, a week, you know, two weeks, um, you know, very, very short turnaround time. Uh, the majority of our inventory is going to be in the Corpus Christi market within about 50 mile driving uh, okay. radius. So uh, Kingsville, Mathis, Rockport, Port Aransas, Aransas Pass, some up to San Antonio. Every once in a while we'll do some deals up here in the DFW market and uh, into San Antonio and Austin market. But the majority of the stuff we're staying down in the uh, Corpus Christi and surrounding areas area. So the hotel market is still alive and well in Corpus yeah, Christi? Yeah, we're doing pretty good. I mean, the, the I think the the people who buy the traditional wholesale deals at least in my area are being extra aggressive because they feel like they're entitled this time because a couple of years ago they were getting them shoved down their throat so mm -hmm. uh but we're able to find uh you know quite a bit of buyers who are ready to go retail and a lot of them are cash buyers we're doing very good with the nationals uh that are uh, ready to move in they don't mind doing a little bit of work if it's you know pretty manageable uh you know they're paying a lot closer to the retail numbers so we're able to move them pretty quickly uh you know mostly it's just uh, staying engaged with our networks making sure everybody knows what's going on and, and uh, staying in front of the people that uh, need to know the product exists um, once we hit MLS uh, we, we go to a different tier of buyer so on the MLS side we're gonna have the agents start pushing in uh, those deals so you're not listing when you're hotel the hotel model you've got a dispo team that's dispo yeah, yeah we'll, we'll close it down and then uh, and then push them out there uh, through through the network first if we our private network can hit handle it first then we'll move out to the MLS side. so your, your private network of buyers mm -hmm. th this is what I'm seeing I'm seeing it on the lending side mm -hmm. i'm seeing it i mean the the wholesale we buy a lot from wholesalers right now yeah all Good trash energy. yeah i mean is, i mean would you agree, agree. or disagree there, i think there's a couple wholesalers out there that still understand what a deal is and, and they can still yeah. bring you something good but i, I mean they're struggling i, I would I would venture to say 90% of people ain't going to be in business in that, a year. That, that's probably true. They're, they're, they, they pivoted into it. They'll pivot out of it. You know? I think I think the FOMO brought them in, mm -hmm. and there's no FOMO in the marketplace right now. Mm -hmm. So with no FOMO, um, capital's not, I mean, somewhat not an issue, right? I mean, there's a ton of yeah. Yeah, private you, capital available for people with a skill set. But even in, on the hard money side of things, um, we're seeing a ton of competitor lenders get their credit lines yanked and they're dropping and they can't they can't you know they can't capitalize anything they know they you know what i mean like they're 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 losing their credit lines so i mean we know we know what that means you know yeah. what i mean correct yeah. um and there's not a lot of i mean there's not a big buzz of everybody posting checks and everything i mean when's the last <laughs> time you've seen somebody post a hud or a check Probably mine. <laughs> I mean, that, yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah, I mean, and I think I posted that just to kind of reignite that that same fire that you're talking about. I think people kind of died off. I'm like, hey, man, this is still active. This is still happening. Let's get out there and you know and do the thing. I mean, it's. Uh, I mean, I got some kids that are, 
Yeah, I, I got a kid that started me when he was 16. Uh, he put 30 grand together in two weeks. Uh, you know, that's pretty legit. That's uh, very legit. Yeah, um, it's uh, he's 17 now. Uh, got another 19, 18 year old. Uh, you know, that just came on board, and and really that that kind of inspired from you. I'm like, well, hey man, he's doing it. You know, <laughs> so yeah. so it gave me it gave me the courage uh, at the leadership side that it's okay to take on these challenges. And say, hey, I know you're only this age, but if we do this process, then we're going to get results. Right. And so so helping them establish that and they're doing really good uh, and it, in, in doing that's brought on a, a, some ancillary business as well so people are like hey I see what you're doing for so-and-so so then the capital becomes easier so instead of you know the hard money might be a little more difficult and some through some of the lenders but the private money starts stepping up and there's well, no that's awesome. private, private money's been I mean if yeah. you, private money was more or less than we've ever had way more I think yeah. way, way more way, infinitely more than we yeah. in, infinitely more than we've ever had um, that's not, I mean, that's really not the issue. Like, um, we swapped over, we're, we're unwinding so many bad transactions and they're not bad because they're not bad because they were bad buys. They're mm -hmm. not bad because they're bad deals. They're bad because we don't want to mess with them. Yeah. They're bad because, you know, at the time that we bought them, they were going to be this. Now it's just a, it's just a, like we swapped our business model from taking down everything, mm -hmm. structuring it as debt to now we want to do everything as equity. And so all the stuff that's debt, all the stuff that's got debt on it, I don't care what we got. Like today we wired $20,000 okay. to sell a deal. We paid 20 grand to vominos it off our books. Just get it out of there. We're never going to send contractors to it. I, you know, we could fix it. We could owner finance it. There's a ton of things that we could do with that deal. Every exit strategy is still at play. We could fix it, rent it out. Everything's still sure. at play. But I would rather pay twenty thousand dollars today, free up that money for the next big deal that we got going, get them into the next deal, and and ride ride on the equity side of things versus the debt side of things. Because I think anybody that's riding on debt right now that has like I mean hell, we got a, the vet clinic. How long mm -hmm. we've owned it? Year and a half, something like that. Forever, oh, only yeah. two years I think. Yeah, in, it's a uh, big January. It's a big profit deal commercial deal gonna good i mean if it rents it rents if it does prime location 60 i think it's got probably a hundred thousand cars a day with both roads mm -hmm. good. unbelievable location we've hired the wrong agent every single time not because and we've not put enough attention on it but we've hired the wrong agent every time we've negotiated several deals got it under contract got you know contracts sent out got agreements on stuff and the agent can't get the contract signed for whatever reason, okay. whatever reason, yes, we'll take this. Or we don't know what we're doing. So when we're like, hey, how would you advise us? You know, what would you do with this offer? We need to ask for this, we ask for that, and then it doesn't it come to fruition. <laughs> so we learned, we're, we're taking our licks there, but what is it, what's the What's the carrying cost on that? Like eight grand a month, 10 grand a month. Eight grand like a month to get to, to get to zero. That one transaction, that one transaction, whether it pays off long term or not, I mean, we might end up with a podcast studio in it for all I know. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. The only thing I can tell you is we own it. We will own it. You know what? We'll end up but like you said, I think we've had the wrong agents. But like you said, I think we've had the wrong agents. But I also think from the start, we knew that that would take a while. We knew that. Yeah. It would take and that's a while. okay. Yeah, we, just... we, we understood it would take a while. We knew we were up against. Um, but, you know, those kind of things happen. I think um, overall, I, I think people that are servicing that debt that don't have the the extra income yeah, to, carry um, to carry it and don't understand rentals and really didn't understand rentals like, you know, I mean, I, I, I've, I know people that are using a 1% rent rule and no, it will not do. No it, cash flow. <laughs> well, it won't now for sure. Yeah. Like, you, like you're going to end up at, at 40% loan to value yeah. on that deal just to make it break even, you're going to have to bring the other 60. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, yeah. so what, what are you going to do? Like, yeah, you've you got to make it make sense. I, mean, I, I, I think I put one like that together. I was trying to explain to somebody, you know, why it wasn't worth 350000 I said, well, 350000 at 8% interest, you know, right now you're at, you know, at, at uh, you know, you're going to be at X and X payment at $1,500 a month at the 200000 at 1500 a month at 2%, but at 8%, it just ain't there. I got to roll that all the way back, $150,000 hit to keep the same payment. And people are buying the payment. They're, they're not buying a, you know, they're, yeah. they're buying their budget. They're not, uh, the price of it's irrelevant to them because what, what is their expense every month? Are they going to qualify or not? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, whether the bank gets it or the person selling it gets it doesn't really matter. I can only afford X number of dollars. Right. So it's, uh, you know, the interest rate goes up, then the, that asset's got to drop down value to keep that cash flow in line and 
Uh, and people don't want to hear it. They don't want to look at that part. They're like, well, it's worth more. Not now. To whom? It, <laughs> you know, but, to but, whom? but the things that I'm seeing, though, yeah. in, the, in the general marketplace, there hasn't been a big dip, dip in yeah. prices. Not like, so yet. the seller that you're talking to yeah. that, that says it's worth more, yeah. I would just agree with them and say, sure, let's list it. Let's get yeah. you more. Yeah. You know what I mean? Let's let's get it on the market. Well, I don't want to deal with all that. Well, this is where the number works Correct. for us to be able to rent it out. That's reality. Our offers are exponentially worse because we only can underwrite this as a rental. We cannot afford, you know, when the market turns, it's going to turn, whatever that looks like. I don't, I, I don't see a scenario where it can happen. Um, mainly because as long as people keep making babies, they're gonna be <laughs> well, it's the it's the illegal immigration, yeah. Um, 560 apartment, 560,000 apartment units are going to hit the ground this year mm -hmm. in the United States. Do you know the stat? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what's that, two months of immigration? Yeah, I mean, what 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 they so so you're not going to build your way out of it. Warren Buffett. You know who Warren Buffett yeah, is? Yeah, he just dumped a huge amount of money into, into two builders, Lenore yeah. and and Dr. Horton. Mm -hmm. What's his prediction? Need yeah. more housing. Yeah, got to have it. Got to got to build more housing. He already owns Twenty First Mortgage, uh, mobile home financing. Berkshire so, Hathaway. And Berkshire Hathaway. Mm -hmm. So he's got. You know, he's placing his bet. Now I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. Do you know a lot about Warren Buffett? He's. Being consistent, Berkshire Hathaway's done really good for a long time. Yeah, he's just an old head. You know what I mean? He's he's seen a couple market cycles. He's seen a couple market cycles. He might get this one wrong. I don't know. But that being said, within that, it's like where where can prices go? Well, everybody says they have to go down. Okay, I'll I'll agree with you. They have to go down. Let let's let's see what we can do about that. So if you got more affordable housing, you got more demand on it now mm -hmm. than you ever had. So how could that price go down? Yeah. That'll stabilize. Yeah. You know what I mean? So where, where's that soft spot at? Is it $600,000 homes? Mm -hmm. Is it $700,000 homes? It, it's way above where I play. Mm -hmm. I, I think you I, would agree. Yeah, yeah on our, our high-end flips, you know, the, and those sit a little bit. You know, we're, we're sitting on those eight, nine, ten months, you know, the, the mill homes, the $800,000 homes, those kind of things, are, they're staying. They're still a market for them. They sell, but the client's a little pickier, and the uh, you know the, they want the finished product to be a little bit nicer. But anything under... Um, 350, 300,000, that, that don't, that don't sit long, you know, it's, yeah. yeah, they move pretty quick. They're easily marketable. Most people, most families will qualify. Um, you know, there's enough room in the deal typically to make things happen. So we got a concession of some kind or got to cover some closing costs or et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. There's an option to do that. Uh, uh, you know, on the higher end homes, I think that, you know, you're going to have you know, some areas which will probably go up some areas in Miami and you know, Dallas area will probably go up in value. And then there'll be that middle ground of the, uh, upper middle class, lower upper class that kind of, I think is going to compress. You know? Well, I don't, I mean, I it's all above my pay grade. Yeah. I don't, I don't play in that. I'll, I'll will you ever hold, own a million dollar flip? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't, you don't, want I don't see the alternative <laughs> exits, you know, and I, I think that's the yeah, game. If you're it, trying to be in this long term, you have to have some level of risk mitigation. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll never own a million dollar flip. Yeah. I don't have this. If I had the desire to live in a million dollar home, I would try a million dollar flip because my sure. worst case scenario would be moving in. Yeah. But million dollars, I mean, we just got a deal passed to us, six hundred thousand dollars, two hundred one acres of land close mm -hmm. to Austin. Okay. Uh, I, I, just I, I I still won't do that deal, Braxton. What we like, what we do with land? Yeah, not much. Yeah, it's like I mean, we can do it, but I don't like it. You yeah. know what I mean? I don't I don't feel as comfortable with it. But we got a mobile home park deal. Yeah. Uh, it's like Braxton called me and told me about it, and I was like, I don't want to do a mobile home park. Because I'm thinking 10 foot apart, but then it ends up being quarter acre lots. Okay. Subdivided different. neighborhood. I was like, 2% rental. Yeah, it starts like, making sense. Then rents below it. market rate. I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah. Now it's now, 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 now we're. Now we're on to something. Yeah, you like, st stabilize those rents and bring it up to two or three percent rent rule in those. So. Oh no no no. no. How, we, how are you going to get them out? We ain't going to do nothing. You're just going to just let them roll. We're going to pay cash for it. <laughs> fix the road. What road is it? Oh, don't say the name. It's the second. It's the middle finger. Yes. Second from the left. There's a messed up road. We're going to repave it, and we're just going to own it cash, free and clear. And we're going to ride it for seven years because it's going to spit out seven years of depreciation. We got that answer from the CPA. Perfect. So it's personal property, seven years of depreciation. And then we're going to unwind it, selling individual homes, homes to individual homeowners. Put an HOA president in on the way out and fucking wave by. We're not doing typical value add. 
raise rent, sell it on a cap rate, play okay. in the market up and down. Gotcha. You know, we're buying it wholesale, selling it retail, after we milk every dime of depreciation out of it, which is only going to take seven years. Perfect. Be so great. it's going to throw off, it's going to throw off some cash. But that deal right there, I mean, like we, I mean, what'd you raise? Three and a half million for the purchase and then we're having a half million in reserves. Yeah, but how much did you raise the first week you were calling? Uh, we got close to a million, I think, that very first week. Very, very first week. And then the last two days, Spoonie. He got 50 yesterday, 40 this morning, and I got another 40 this morning. Yeah, and then he's going to be, he's got a guy that's coming out tonight to this. That's 25 to 50. Yeah, that's 25 to 50. So when we say private, like the stock market, there's all this noise about China and all that. Have you, do you pay attention to financial? A little bit. No, like the yeah. news is weird. Okay. Would you agree? Yeah, I mean, well, I mean, it's all targeted, you know, so towards the bias, you know, which side you're going to go on. But which, which, what, what are you talking about on China? We're talking about the BRICS setup. Or are we talking about the, uh, uh, you know, uh, changing the dollar, switch, dropping no, the dollar? None, none of that. None okay. of that. China's China's uh, debt bubble is apparently about to pop. Yeah. And Bank of America came out and said something, made a big announcement. Mm -hmm. And then all the financial YouTubers, which are like us, we're, I guess we're adding to it right now. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? But we're not financial YouTubers. This ain't financial advice. But, Selling the drama. Well, they, they, they all jumped on. And then the big short guy, Michael Berry, mm -hmm. placed a $1.6 billion short out of his pop $5 billion that he's got. He shorted the S&P 500, $1.6 billion. And everybody's kind of doing that. Now, it's funny because you can get both sides of that coin. You know what I mean? But... It's something to do with China, something to do with their debt, something to do with some big catastrophe that's going to happen, and all the news is yelling about it, right? But I'm just like you. They always yell about something. Yeah. You know, it moves the market, and somebody's betting on the other side of it. That's it. Yeah. That That's all it is. You know what I mean? They got the machine, and the machine is machining. But for the average boomer, you know any boomers? A couple. <laughs> the average boomer that's sitting with all their cash in the stock market so they might have a million, million five in the stock market. They've rode this incredible wave up in the stock market. They're sitting probably tip top in the stock market right now, mm -hmm. you know. But if they had to retire tomorrow, the only thing they could do is spend that million and a half. They're not, I mean, what dividend stocks would you feel safe in living off of? That that late in the game, you're picking five, six percent returns, maybe at most. Yeah. You so just I mean, want to make sure you don't lose any yeah, thing so, at that point. So I don't know. Do any bonds pay monthly? Your bills come monthly. Do any bonds? You, pay you can get certain types of bonds. Yeah. So so some you're, corporate bonds. So you're going into these instruments to try to make that million and a half get you to 80 years old. Mm -hmm. Ain't got no tax benefits. Some of them do, I guess. Yeah. So, but anyways, whatever it is, they're going to try to go into that vehicle and cash flow that million and a half. But if they leave it in the stock market much longer, they might get caught in another cycle. Yeah. You know what I mean? I so mean, my message to them would be, if you're thinking about that, swap to cash right now just get it all cash and uh consider some cash flow in real estate i mean yeah. what's the depreciation looking like on uh the one we got a little under half million in it uh it's not gonna be that much but i we haven't got it added out yet but it's going to be two to three hundred thousand dollars in depreciation a year which consequently is about how much it's going to the noi is going to be so i mean it's going to come right. with a ton of tax benefits and cash flow you know that comes monthly monthly cash flow yeah i got some stability now yeah and we'll, we'll exit it and you'll get your chunk back and we'll hopefully find something else we'll, <laughs> or or interest rates go down and we say hey we don't want to sell this asset so we refinance it give you back all your principal you know correct and then uh and then hang on to it for another 10 years you know what i mean but i don't know it's kind of a wild ride, but you got some deals. What, what, tell us about this this airplane hangar deal. You're about to raise sixty million dollars. Can you talk about it? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so on this deal here, but we're, we got uh, three hundred forty four acres that we're looking to convert to a flying community. Uh, so it, it, it's been a process. We're still in the process of securing all you know all the sellers and everything on board uh, with getting there. We've met with some developers uh, out in Houston area, uh, so they're going to help us in in doing a public private partnership. So we'll be moving towards uh, you know building out with the with the community. Uh, so basically, I mean, it's on the water. It's a you know beautiful location. So I mean, you'll fly in, land on the airstrip, turn right into your own uh, small hangar home. So you can uh, you know park your plane there, move there. It's going to be uh, you know some mixed use in there. It will be uh, uh, 
a, a boardwalk, uh, which is, was important to the city, so they wanted to give some concessions to make it appealing for the for them to market for the city. Uh, so there'll be a boardwalk on the water uh, that'll bring in some you know tourists and uh, you know help pick up the local economy and some ad valorem tax, etc. Uh, then we'll be uh, you know there'll be single family homes. Uh, there'll also be multifamily condos and multifamily in a uh, hotel, uh, and then the uh, flight school, which will be a part of the uh, of the airfield, which will be on there. Uh, so the, all, all that mixed in together on 344 acres uh, on the water. So it's going to be a pretty pretty nice uh, deal. And I mean that deal kind of just I mean you know I think the big benefit with networking with everybody is you know that that's something that uh, five years ago when I was or six years ago whatever when I was in dealerships never would have crossed my mind. I wouldn't have thought nothing about it. Yeah. <laughs> I would have just been, oh, man, that sounds awesome, you know. Uh, and then somebody had went to one of my meetings and said, hey, I, you know, I'm a pilot. I'm trying to sell this hangar. Uh, and I said, well, why don't you, like, buy this, uh, uh, you know, uh, airport over here? It's, uh, and I was kind of halfway joking. So he looks at it and goes, yeah, that's awesome. I think I want to do that. Can you help me? It's like, I don't know. Let's figure it out. So start yeah. making some phone calls. He starts making phone calls, and we get some people interested. And then this guy knows this guy, and then all of a sudden we got all these pilots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's make this deal go. You know, and then, right. uh, you know, so now now we're you know we got got a decent amount of capital invested into you know just just in due diligence. But uh, what's it, what's the due diligence on something like that cost? Well, right now, I mean, we're about seventy five k. Into due diligence. Yeah, just uh, will the land support it? Can we do it? What what is the uh, uh, economic uh, impact? What's it going to do? Yeah. How's that going to affect the thing? What's the Corps of Engineers going to say? Can we build? You know, what does it take to you know build this? How you know paying the uh, uh, you know the developers, the engineers, the uh, uh, planners, the master planners. Uh, you know, everybody wants to be engaged with. Uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of pieces to that puzzle. And honestly, I don't even know them all. I just know the guy that knows. <laughs> over, no, I, got I know you. this guy who knows this guy, and then this other team knows this other mm -hmm. part. And we're we're constructing the whole thing together. Uh, and then, uh, you know, uh, been a lot of help with uh, the local, uh, you know, realtor uh, there. Has uh, he's pretty ingrained in the, in the his family has, uh, I think, they right at a hundred years that they've been in that local market. So it's uh, that that's helped uh, get some things across the finish line with the sellers because they had turned down higher offers than what I said I could probably make work for them, and because they. They wanted to see something happen, you know, and so yeah. this was in line with their dream that they weren't able to, you know, make happen. So by incorporating them into the deal, we're able to make the same move forward at a more but conservative rate. I've seen that spot yeah. in the world a bunch. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna <laughs> dox it or anything, but I've seen yeah. that spot in the world, and I think the vision to see, yeah. you know, you know that you, I mean, anything on the Texas coast is eventually gonna, it's gonna go. develop out. Yeah. Um, but I don't. I mean, I can't even. Can, <laughs> Like I can't, I can't wrap my head around it. Yeah. It sounds super yeah, we'll cool. Yeah, see. Yeah, like I called the bank. I said, "Okay, man, I need. A, I'm gonna buy this. It's gonna be 60 mil." And they're like, "Okay, well, how much? You know, how much money do I need? Well, we need about half." And like, I don't think I can get that. Uh, well, we can do a 33. Okay, hold on. I need 18. Okay, yeah, I think we can get it. Okay, cool. <laughs> and it's uh, you know, like, all right, so we got this this piece tentatively solved. I mean, nothing matters for the money transfers, but you know, we got right. Uh, but to you know, know at least okay, I got somebody interested in playing the game with us, and some other people so far, you know. So we, what's the what's the exit look like on that? Because here's we've we've yeah. watched in Waco, mm -hmm. we watched the big thinkers with yeah. the prime real estate. Nice. There's kind of there's kind you of a, watch it <laughs> well, I mean, there's the the school of thought on mobile home parks is. And this, I don't know who said this, but like everybody always wants to build a mobile home park. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they go in and build them. And they always say the second guy makes the money. Yeah. The first guy builds a mobile home park, but the second guy makes the money. And I don't know what, I don't know where that comes from. I don't know what, don't know what school or, or train of thought. I think, I think what they do is they get behind on it. But we've watched the, the, um, your apartments that you live in. Mm -hmm. How long do we watch them being built? That whole first year that we were there, dude, we've like I've seen them. They built, they built a basketball stadium in Waco. Okay. In months, that thing has popped up fast. In months, yeah. but they can't build a, a simple set of apartments, and I don't know that they're simple. Y'all might have some really nice stuff. Well, it, I mean, they're they're luxury apartments, luxury, but it's not they're right crazy. on the river. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, so, but prime real estate, we're talking about. Like A plus plus real estate, Correct. Waco A plus plus real estate. You're not going to be on downtown in the river. There's mm -hmm. only, there's only, like that's this is only, the one spot. This is the one spot. There's Correct. no other spot. Like mm -hmm. everything else is owned by Baylor or the city. Sure. So this is the one spot. Okay. But I, but I, I look at those guys and I'm like, they're bleeding money. Yeah. Any day now, 
any day now, the second guy is going to get to come in That's all cash and take over their project, and they're going to they're going to eat a little bit of money to get away from it because it's it's just too much it's too much to take on. Yeah, and and they're going to do. But we've also seen the hotels across the other mm-hmm. side, the two of them, which is also a plus plus real estate, and and I mean hell, that's been that's been ever since I've it's been three years. Yeah. And one of them has already changed changed hands at least once. And all the stuff within the three that. years already. Do what? Okay, so we didn't even get all the depreciation or anything. So it's, <laughs> I, I don't I don't I don't yeah. know what any of that happened. I just know they haven't they 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 were probably wanting to be open by this football season. Correct. They were definitely wanting to be open. It doesn't look like anything has changed from and, last year to this year. And and see that then you know to to that point you know the stadium gets built quickly and then the apartments do not, which was a big reason why we wanted to do a public private partnership so that we can get the city to be engaged in the process and have a win in the overall structure so that we can get past the hurdles that they tend to put in the way. You, so it's a win for them and a win. But for do you us. think it's a do you think it's a city issue on why they didn't get it done? I I think I, I don't mean, know. I don't know that project, but uh, <laughs> I, well, I, I honestly, I honestly believe it's, it's a cash flow issue. Well, I think I think COVID hit them in the mouth. Wow. I think it became a money issue. Sure. And then once it becomes a money issue, it's a money issue. It, 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 it doesn't never, stop being a money issue. Yeah, like yeah. once once you get unbankable, oh, yeah. you remain unbankable For until minute. until you know what I mean. Nobody. It's like ever like the vultures just sit on the fence and watch. They're just like, wait. They're like okay, any day now they're going to drop dead. And when they do, this Boom. corpse is going to be mine. That's it. And that that's, I mean, I don't know that that's what, ha- I know that's what happened on one hotel because it, it went, com- it was framed up. Okay. There was wood. And then they roped off the construction site and it grew trees oh. and vines. And then some bros came in and started working on it one day. But the first thing they had to do was cut down the trees and vines off the wood. Not really. It didn't get that bad, but. So I mean, trash it, it, sat, it sat there like that for a long time and nobody working on it. Wow. Yeah. So let me well, ask you this then. <laughs> let, let me ask you this. I don't know how far along you are, but yeah. how, how difficult has it been to start working with the planning and zoning? Yeah. And uh, I mean, uh, the difficulty really at this phase has not been too terribly difficult. I mean, when we went to the city first, you know, we had a meeting with the mayor and it, coincidentally, the guy that you know, was interested in partnering up with me originally, uh, he happened to be uh, the instructor for uh, the mayor's uh, spouse, it uh, so it like it's a, there was a lot of tie-in. So sometimes mm-hmm. things are a little bit uh, beyond my ability. You know, they just happen to be that, that somebody above right, me right. decides that hey, you're too dumb to do this on your own, so we're gonna force you to succeed. Right. You know what I mean? It's not a not a me thing. It's a, the divine says, okay, let's let's make this happen. Uh, you know, so you know, like the, so they connect us with the you know city manager, and the city managers mm-hmm. connect us with the council, and then right. you know all these people are, are integrating. Then uh, coincidentally, a guy that had bought. Uh, one of my uh, just one of my properties because he wanted a, a rental uh, happens to be a, a pretty big developer <clears throat> in the area and said hey I know I know some developers in Houston have done a similar project you know let's fly up to Sugarland and, yeah. uh, and we'll uh, go fly into that community and go mm-hmm. check it out okay let's go go up there yeah that's our thing here's how you do this and here's how we get the concessions for this how do we get the tax benefits for this here's where the TERS is and uh, uh, you know and I'm like okay cool so I'm like learning and yeah. pretending I know at the same time so <laughs> when, it, when it comes to the phases of this yeah. project has anybody like is your plan to do it in phases and sell it correct, off? Correct. Well, partially. So I mean, the first first development is going to be uh, finishing up the airport. That's got to be updated. You know, right now it's 2,500 uh, feet, so we're going to stretch it out to 3,500 to land larger planes. Uh, once that part's developed, we'll uh, build out the area that's going to end up uh, running the. Um, uh, uh, the flight school, you know, the hangars, et cetera, and then right. some mixed use towards the frontage. On the back side, the multifamilies, the multifamilies would pretty much be pre-sold, so those should be already developed out and pre-sold per lots. The, so, so, the, so you're going to sell the lots to people that want to build multifamily. We're going to, we're, you know, we're going to be set up with the builders to build, the, not the multifamily. The multifamily is going to be separate. The single family houses so along, family. yeah, the single family is going to be, uh, you know, sold out to the end buyer, the right. end users that's going to have them. Uh, maybe want to be retained, but I don't, I don't, I don't so, need another fifteen. So those are just selling lots yeah, out. Yeah, going to sell those lots out with okay. the builders, going to partner up with the builders to get those across. The multifamily on the, or the mixed use on the frontage of, of, of the water side is going to be condos on top and then sto- uh, stores on the bottom, stores and restaurants down on the bottom. Uh, so so whenever you build this out, do you go, because this is this is the way my mind works and uh-huh. I, I can't unfuck the way my mind works. <laughs> it's okay. It's how, how do I get this thing to service its own debt as fast as possible? Correct. Yeah. So, so if now you build it all cash if you're 
raising what, a quarter what, billion what, dollars. Well, if I got if I got three hundred million or some shit, maybe I can do that. But I don't. But, but, but <laughs> yeah. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, like, yeah, so, yeah. So, so, like, so like so like where's you, that lottery when I need it, man? No, <laughs> I mean you could raise it all cash. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you could do it all cash. Sure. Because because you're I mean you could definitely do it all cash. I I mean I'm I'm not afraid to debt. I'm not Dave Ramsey. Yeah. But I, ain't, I, ain't, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not fucking with these banks right now. Yeah, well, it's, it's expensive. The bank, the bank, it the ain't bank, that. It ain't, it ain't that. They're tight. They're quick. I don't, I'm, I'm worried about them. Mm-hmm. I ain't worried about me. Their solvency, or yes, like, yeah. I, like I'm worried. I'm, 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 I'm. Those small banks are struggling. Some of them are struggling. It, it, big banks. I'm worried about them. I ain't worried about yeah. me. You know what I mean? Like True. my real estate's gonna. No matter Perform. if we got Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> We'll take fucking aluminum cans. Yeah. You know what I mean? If we're smelting aluminum at the end of this rupees, deal, rubies or dollars, I'm in. That's right. We'll yeah. take some gold, <laughs> yeah. take some bullets, take some guns. Yeah. We'll take something of value: eggs, yeah. chickens, whatever. Yeah. But like right now, I, I, it's not interest rates or any of that. It's just I don't. There's no need. There's no need to. There's no need to go there. So whenever I'm looking at it, I'm like, okay, if I'm going to phase this thing out, I'm going to get to what will cash flow the quickest and fastest. Now I don't know if it's true or not, mm-hmm. but in my mind, it seems like Under, the boardwalk. Yeah. Uh, um, that the city wants. Correct. Would be because they're going to start putting money in with it. Well, they'll throw money in with it, but also right. at the same time, it, it, you know, they, they won't put up as big of an obstacle, but commercial real estate it's Correct. it's uh touristy it start, gets it gets people driving by your project i would the hell with that runway yeah that run until they wanted to land a plane on it it still have potholes yeah, yeah. you know i might be out there patching a pothole the day they land it yeah but i would try to get that that thing yeah. cash flowing but even if i had to because i'm talking to a different guy he's building out something in phases correct so he's doing like a phase one phase two same thing phase three but he's building phase one, selling it, building phase two, selling it, mm-hmm. going to have phase three free and clear. Correct. Own it forever. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, and that's that's basically how it's going to go. The airport will be retained, uh, okay. you know, the, the, which which will stay you know, within the entity. And then I, the multifamily will be owned, but should not be free right. and clear at the end of the deal. Uh, the condos are going to be sold off, and then the uh, mixed use at the bottom for the you know, restaurants right. or whatever uh, will still be owned, too. So those will be refinanced okay. out. But each one is going to be different. So there will be a raise for phase this, and these are going to be the investors on, you know, section section property A, and then this is section section property B and then you know and the, yeah. all those will okay. be owned individually so then uh, you know as those are developed out and sold out now the houses will be independent and then the maintenance runway etc will be done through the hoa which all yeah, people yeah, yeah. are going to pay through uh so then those things will be retained for there then the flight school will be responsible for renting from the airfield itself right. and will also be a, a big marketing uh, ploy for that um what are those people that that borrowed the 20 million mm-hmm. remember what i'm talking about I went to the christmas party the racetrack. The 20 men? The Crescent? No, the racetrack in Houston. We went to the okay. Christmas party. Yes. Yes. So, so and these, they had a the hotel or event center down there, too. It, it was Bear Bryant's grandson. Oh, okay. Yes. Owned the dog racing track down okay. in Houston, south of Houston. So, do you remember what that town was? I, these folks. I think it was Bay City. It's just a man okay. and his wife. I think so, too. Just a man and his wife. Much older man. Hot wife, older as well, older than me, but younger than him. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, it's everything I know about them. They they were buying out of business malls, and they were transforming the malls into like you know, like bars, okay. like like more of a like bar scene with for the whole damn mall. The whole damn mall. <laughs> like so, okay. they, they were taking awesome. they were they they would turn some of it in in like co working spaces. Okay. They would turn some of it into um, they had a big gym at that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it was like I mean it was like a place you could go clubbing essentially like there was a bunch of different types of bars sports bars restaurants. Yeah. I mean it was like food a food hall type like like, uh, like Graham Central yes. Station. No, yeah. not I like Graham Central. <laughs> you got like five bars in one. No, it was nicer than that. Like it was, yeah. it was well, like, of course, like what so he'll just said like a, like a size, food but, hall, but like. Yeah. cool little boutique style yes. like okay. they weren't trying to sell t-shirts they weren't okay. trying to sell they, you know there wasn't the spencers in there no more okay yeah well but, that's all gone well yeah but yeah. but people were coming to this like it was busy it was popping yeah once mm-hmm. once the anchor tenants leave you gotta 
change it up. Yeah, but they got this thing for like a hundred thousand dollars. Like I mean, they they stole this thing. Like hundreds of thousands of square feet. Still got to spend feet. twenty million in rehab, but yeah, we got to. Right. They, they didn't know. <laughs> yeah. They didn't. That was the thing. Like their oh, their nice. plan was their plan it was worked. genius. Like awesome. genius, genius. So, anyways, they go. They they see this racetrack. I don't know if it was off market. I have no earthly idea. The only thing I know is we did a twenty million dollar loan. Okay. But here's what they did. They went in and they said this racetrack and they put in a master plan for it. Correct. They're turning the racetrack into what is it? A something weird. It's remember. it's a music venue. Okay. Yeah. It's a it's a it's like a it's like a stadium with suites and all the stuff. Okay. But it's only gonna do concerts. It's okay. only for concerts. And so they they had this vision that they would do that. Now Live Nation paid them a big lump sum to lease it. So Live mm -hmm. Nation is going to get all of the. I mean Live Live Nation basically rented the whole thing from them. So they Badass. they got that contract signed up front. Now this thing is just an abandoned dog park at this point in time. Perfect. So they're they're picking it up for twenty million. Okay. And then they've got to. Um, you know somehow spend the money to to rehab this thing live nations already signed them a lease so they got something to take to the that's bank that's good um but they took the 80 acres in front of it and what they sell it for 20 million something insane something something insane they just lopped it up and before they ever purchased it had sold contracts cash on all this land perfect and got all their principal back and then the bank with their contract or whatever, maybe maybe a little bit of jet money, I don't know. Correct. So we did a twenty million dollar loan for basically a month and just a cash flow their sales. No, they 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 like sold all that shit in the front. Yeah. And it all closed and they paid off jet and now they're they might be down there. I'm sure they still are. I don't know if interest rates have messed them up. No. But they're down there creating this music venue. And it's, in, I mean, but where is it? Is it Bay City? It's, it's Southwest Houston, it's, somewhere it's, in there. I thought it was on 45. Oh, and it's already operational? No, it's definitely no, it's, not operational. It's going to okay. be a minute, but. But they, but they did that as such to where. Yeah. They, the, all they, the only thing they did was see that this 80 acres in the front, it might have been a parking lot. I don't know what it was. It might have just been land. Yeah. I, I, I have never laid eyes on it. But they saw that it had more value in smaller pieces. Correct. And they, I mean, they, I don't know how hard they worked their ass off to get it sold, but they got all their principal back. And then they, they're going to focus on the baby, which is the music venue, which is a cool idea. I mean, you just think about all the arenas and Correct. all the things. That, it was right down there close to NRG Stadium, wasn't it? No, no, no. You sure? I don't know. It ain't the <laughs> Astrodome. It, it ain't that, but it was it, it was in that area. No, it's it's south. It's on on forty five. It's in between uh, Kick out uh, Osteen, Galveston and friggin' uh, <laughs> it's in between Galveston and and uh, and Kima or like no, nah, like it's, it's in between Galveston. Past, and I don't go down there often. I don't know. In Nassau area, I think it's where they killed all them ladies back in the eighties. Okay, <laughs> they did a Netflix documentary on it because I remember what? I was like, I don't remember that. Yeah, well, I don't either, but. <laughs> There's Netflix in the eighties. I was still watching cartoons, man. I don't know <laughs> huh? I don't know then. I don't know either. Just Google dog park, Houston. Yeah. There, there, there's one up north right. and there's one down south. There yeah, might right. be more now, but yeah, well, we got Johnny Steele dog park, Congressman Bill Archer, Millie Bush. Would you recognize the name? I don't. Uh, no. <laughs> there's, there's a lot of dog Bay parks area there. down here near Seabrook. Yeah, 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 that's what I was saying. Seabrook's over That's by, close by to Baytown. Yeah, Baytown. Nah, yeah. That's not it. It's off of 45. Is it not that? Kings Point? No. Nah, well, one of them. Yeah. One of them, some bitches. <laughs> yeah. we'll, we'll know whenever a Taylor Swift concert's happening there. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> but, anyways, that that's how I think, like, your project, like, I'm like, man, you repurpose some of that. You probably sell it to a different guy that's going to go do his thing with it. You know what Correct. I mean? It comes his problem. You sell, sell you sell, you create the dream, sell the dream. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, hey, you, you, you need single family housing. You need these other things. Correct. Like, I mean, you could just, the land might just have, I mean, the easiest deal to do, rather than trying to build all this out and mm -hmm. get bogged down, you might be able to get it all done, paid for cash by, just selling, the parcels. Correct. Um, I think it comes down to time value of money. Yeah. yeah. Pretty, pretty and and how, yeah, how far into it do you have to get before you, before you could potentially just be like, well, and what what are they good at? You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, I'm doing what I'm good at. I recognize the deal, and 
I chop, you know what I mean? I visualize it. I get it drawn out. I get the city to sign off on it. I do all the, the things. Correct. But I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to be good at owning a, or building a boardwalk. I might be good at owning one, but building one might whoop my ass. <laughs> That's so true. I might go bankrupt trying to build this thing. I very well could. But I could come in here and pick the bones off the guy that tries to build it. You know what I mean? If I sell him the land or, or do it on a land lease, even better. You yeah. know what I mean? And he can't make it, you know, great time to come in and take over. Take over. I mean, just something to think about. I mean, it's just an idea. It's why. It's I mean, why the good, good news like is that. it's early enough to do whatever the hell we want to do. No, yeah. I know that. I know that. But, <laughs> I, but, I, but, but like when I start bogging myself down yeah. with, with a bunch of stuff I don't know how to do. Yeah. I would just rather do, do what make you know. a deal with somebody that that they're already they're like they already got that track record. Like they don't get that money tomorrow. You they know what I mean? They already got it. They already got it. Like Grant Cordell don't know how to build Class A apartments. Right, I mean, he buys them. Buy them. <laughs> he goes and buys them, but there's somebody out there that all they do is build Class A apartments. Correct. Yeah, but he bought one from that guy in uh, in Houston. Oh yeah. Yeah, and, and, and uh, at, I believe yeah. they lost money. Do what? Yeah, I think they lost money on that deal too. The, the build, guy that built the builder. It? Yeah. Oh, I don't doubt it. Yeah, yeah. He he was. I think he bought it below uh, construction cost. He might have. Yeah, I remember the heights. Uh, yeah, one of our. Uh, uh, you know, we do that. Do you, you do that? Uh, oh yeah. On every Wednesday. Yeah. I don't. I don't do it anymore. But I did for a while. Yeah. But that that deal right there. I mean, whenever I heard the rents, I was like, Ooh. rents about to make a killing. Yeah. Because yeah. he's going to take rents from twelve hundred to eighteen hundred with no effort, because Braxton's paying eighteen hundred in downtown Waco. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's not the heights. Correct. I'll bet you the heights is a, three two. That's a primo. I mean, it's a nice place. It's too. a nice place. <laughs> it's like, have I you mean, seen it? Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 No, yeah. I mean he's he's gonna he's gonna lick that thing. Now yeah. I don't know if he's got any floating debt out there. He's got he said he said a couple of different times he's got floating debt. But good thing about Grant is, I mean he might have some floating debt, but I'm sure he can raise it, pay it off cash, or yeah. put a fix, you know get it leveraged to a point. It ain't gonna make a bunch of money, but it ain't really got to. He's just mm-hmm. gonna ride it out. You know what I mean he could yeah. he could raise the capital to go pay down debt. Yeah, he's pretty pretty good at raising capital. Yeah. yeah. Think, <laughs> go ahead. I was just say one, one other thing is so y'all are keeping the airport. Correct. What's financial is something like that look long term? Yeah, well, I mean, on the uh, and, and that's part of what we're trying to work out. You know, so we're working that out with the developers and saying, hey, you guys have broken these down and done these before. How am I going to make this thing perform? I'm great with putting it together. Looks pretty. Sounds awesome. Love the idea. How the fuck do I make it make money? You know, and yeah. how do we continue to make it make money? I know how to do the condos. I, I know how to do the single mm-hmm. family. How do I make this airport perform? So uh, now working with the the pilot, you know, what he brought to light. Okay, I mean, you got uh, uh, you know hangar space that we're renting out, so that becomes hangar rentable uh so we have rentable space uh gasoline is a big uh, item uh you know i mean i, I guess that makes it like when we fly up here that's 480 something dollars to fly up just on a little bitty ass plane so i don't know how much the jet fills up with a bunch Dude, yeah <laughs> so, have, you, have y'all have y'all seen this this uh neighborhood in crescent uh google google crescent um crescent uh crescent racetrack okay uh, this was this was this was a big thinker. This Let's this guy right here it. might be somebody to reach out we'll to. Reach out this to him too. Retire to right here. Uh, motor Motorsport Ranch, dude, out in Crescent, Texas. Homie built this. Now there's a there's a air there's a, a hangar community like what you're talking about. Yeah. Out in Granbury. Yes. And it actually did very well, but it's just a grass. Hit hit Yeah, yeah there's, there's, there's one of those in Mathis too, I, which I didn't know until I started doing it. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a. Yeah. Right. They, yeah. They, Go go satellite view and then uh, Fredericksburg and a lot of this. Is, to go to Google Maps. This is nuts. So this dude builds a Formula One racetrack. Okay. In Crescent, Texas, which southwest West. of Fort Worth. Uh huh. Um, can you get a satellite view or no? I'm trying. Uh, go go to Google Maps. Google Maps or Google, Google Earth. Maps? Oh yeah. Yeah. There you go. Here we go. Here we go. Now look at this thing, because this is I was uh, like when I first saw this deal, I was like, "How does this deal work?" Yeah. But it's easy. There's a lot of people in the Metroplex that can't drive their car 200. Just can't. But you it's can. not legal. You can on the track. But you can lease. You can lease a place out here. Okay. And he's got storage units, out there, air conditioned storage, non air conditioned storage. I mean, he's got it all built up. And you can see the racetrack. And so you got a $300,000 car. You pay him. He stores it. You go out there on Sunday, buy fuel from him. Yeah. 
and I mean they're loud as shit. But also on the track, which I don't know, I'm, over there on the right, it's over there on the right. Correct. He's he's developing a neighborhood mm -hmm. where I don't know if it's Airbnb. I don't know if it's short term rentals. I don't know if they live there full time. But it, on the top right of that thing, so he'll um, right in there. Zoom in. Those, Those are like right there are fancy houses. houses too. Correct. And with big garages underneath them. Yeah. And I don't. I don't. But know it's like it's like a country club. Like they have an initiation yeah. fee. They pay monthly. And yeah. Because yeah. we were trying to drive his car two hundred out there whenever he had it, and we re realized we couldn't afford to even get on the track. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, with so a Mustang. So basically, what, what you have there is going to be very, very similar to what's going to be out there. So there, instead of parking their car, their three hundred thousand yeah. dollar car, they're going to be parking their three hundred thousand dollar plane, probably maybe, right. maybe a mill plane, depending mm -hmm. on what it is. The twenty thirty million dollar planes won't fit on that field, uh, but the uh, you know most of the uh, smaller jet and yeah. you know down will, uh, so they'll be flying in. They're still be able to fly in, turn left, park into right into their own house on those particular uh, homes. Uh, they can wind through. Uh, you know, so th those properties are going to be good you know, for the airport. You're going to have you know three main sources. We're going to have the, uh, you know, of course the hangar space is going to be rented. The fuel expenses for uh, you know both uh, uh, jet fuel and AV gas and av gas. And then the, you, you don't know what that is? Okay, well, uh, you got one gas for one and uh, jet fuel for the other. <laughs> do, you, do you have to go get a lot of FAA approval for yeah, having houses right there? See, where the yeah. Fuel uh, now, if it's if it's a private airfield, the FAA is a lot more lenient. Uh, when it becomes a public airfield, then it becomes way more uh, way more of a pain in the ass which is why the like that small grass field you're yeah. running you know why you're able when you go and look at that field compared to when you go and look at the houses next to dfw or something you know they're way out there with a big fence around mm -hmm. it and a lot mm -hmm. of area uh you know you, you wouldn't be able to do that necessarily have, over there have you ever seen somebody try to land a 747 or 737 yeah. or whatever size planes <laughs> these are on the small airfields yeah no uh, the smallest i've seen is uh people landing over in uh uh where was it have uh, aspen yeah. Ever seen the bro that <laughs> worked at an airport up in Seattle uh -huh. and stole a plane, stole oh, an Alaskan wow. airline plane? Have not. Pull, pull, go to YouTube and, and put man steals plane in Seattle. His his radio calls are pretty 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 funny because he's just up there. He's doing fucking just having fun. He's flying shit out of this plane. Knowing that it's like I might as well have fun before they shoot me down or I. I don't think I don't, well, I don't they, they scramble they, jets they won't or not. Scramble if you're but, but here he is walking in. There he is walking in. So he worked at the airport. He walks in. Signs in, okay. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's he's going, and he he goes out to this plane right here. He, he's pushing it out with his little cart, and then he pops the door open and he runs and catches it right here. It's gonna be it's gonna be rolling away from him when the door opens, when he unhooks from it, it starts rolling, and he runs up and catches it. There he is. <laughs> Comes up and hops in. Never flown up. a plane before in his life, and and gets us some bitch in the air. Dang! Does he land? Well, or he so there that? he is taking off, and and the radio, the radio, um, like they they did, did a little montage of him talking on the radio, and and he didn't even have the cabin pressurized, so he's trying to. They they eventually get a pilot in there, and they're like. You know, they, but he'll pass out eventually. No, it's like Spoon trying to have a conversation <laughs> with you. You know what I mean? Like, like if if he's trying to teach me how to rewire a box right now. Yes, it's like like Spoon. You all of a like, sudden, dude. What what color is the wire that I'm supposed to be grabbing? Don't tell me the technical yes, name. Yes, I don't it. need to know all this. What does it look like? So <laughs> so they're talking to him like that, and he can't understand them. And he's telling them, he's like, dude, I'm just a bro. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. Yeah. And eventually, he just crashes it into an this. island. He crashed, you know. Oh yeah, he so, crashed it. So they they, they grounded all the flights. Yeah. Like he's doing fucking yeah. barrel roll, rolls and all the shit. Oh shoot! He, so he crashed crash, it into crash. an island. Um, which I mean, I think he I think he said something right before he crashed it, or told him like, hey, I, they were trying to get him to land at this small airfield and this, and he's like, I don't know, I don't really want to put anybody's life in danger. <laughs> you know, I just bad. wanted to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much like, but that like you have to you have to go listen to it. But that wow. Would, that's, That's crazy. Well, we I, mean, don't, I don't know what the liability we, is if somebody. We don't want that, uh, <laughs> you know. But the uh, but uh, I'm, I'm sure those things could happen. And, and really, when you're in like an FBO or small, there's not it's not the same security as when you go to. Uh, you know, like when I fly up here, I, I you know drive up right to the hangar. Yeah. There's nobody I talk to, hop in the thing, and it's up to the pilot to you know yeah be be in charge of, of the who's on board. So if uh, you know he doesn't do his part, then. That there's an issue but. dude all them small airports out in yeah. um, like comanche county yeah you, you you weren't working for us when those bros flew in were you mm -mm. 
Yeah, so we had... we hearing about it. Yeah, we had some guys that were wanting to buy our apartments. Mm-hmm. So the broker flies, gets his own, has his own plane. And he's like, I'm going to just land it in Comanche. Okay. And we're like, what? There's yeah, an airport it's there. so much easier. Well, but they, they flew in, and apparently the airport just has a loaner vehicle sitting there? Correct. Yeah, like when we fly here, I when we like, fly up here, what? man, and, and you know, you know, Terrence, I, I appreciate everything you do. Love you, you know, for, for uh, bringing me into this world. But uh, we'll, we'll uh, fly up and go land and meet him, and you know, here's the keys, here's the car. Uh, we'll fill it up with gas, and uh, and you come back, I mean, it's... Yeah, fucking seconds. Yeah. You know, it's it's so much easier. Suburban. So much like, easier. Yeah. Wait, I thought I was going to pick you up at the airport. Like, oh no, they got planes. Yeah, they, 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 got they, they have their own fleet, and and that is. And, and that's a big part of what he's wanting to integrate at that field mm-hmm. too, is to have that same type of deal. You know, so they're going to stay at the restaurant, try to keep everybody in house as much as possible, uh, spending money at the at the restaurants, the bars, at the you know everything that we have on site. Uh, the flight school is obviously a big uh, you know. I uh, think section. in there you should also so build talk about a four diamond, okay, with a restaurant elevated. They got one down here in Mansfield. We might be close because we'll see what you got. It's elevated. Uh, and then it's softball fields for oh, okay uh, and you can so the parents are up there in the restaurant getting hammered okay while their nine-year-olds out there sweating their ass off trying to play a little softball uh, i think that's too much expensive real estate to tie up on that space no 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 it'll be <laughs> it'll, trust me it'll cash flow <laughs> it'll, uh, the, it'll, it'll cash flow but, those, those softball parents they, they throw a lot of money at yeah, those nine-year-olds i mean the uh, i mean it'll still be a venue place uh you know yeah. so, so i mean there'll, there'll be other things but uh, the restaurant that we're looking to build up there it's gonna you know it's gonna be high set in there so you'll be overlooking the right. bay and the uh, and the both cities you'll be able to see both both cities depending on which that's direction cool. it's going to be it, it, it full uh, 360 view um, of those, so it's going to be pretty fantastic. I think we're uh, did we, we run out of time already, Rich? Um, it's 5 so here, 53. All right, well, we're going to wrap this thing up, guys. If you're in or around Richardson tonight, tonight is what August 22nd, 2023. I mean, it doesn't matter, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, this lives on the internet forever. We don't want you to come up here. Yeah, yeah. The night that you watch this, you know what I mean? Like you're just sitting there at two a.m. I'll like, probably be here. Like, yeah, true. Anyways, come on by Richardson, uh, uh, Richard Shelton. Thank yep. you for stopping by. Thank you so much for having me, man. Um, did you get everything done on the cycle? Yeah, yeah, around? it was fun, man. Yeah, th- thanks for getting me on yeah, board. With so that. sweet. Yeah, you want to go do what? some more stuff? Let's go do some more promos. To, let's do I, it. Do, okay. I do want to shoot something like a little outro for this. Okay. Okay. Let's we'll do, do it. it. So, anyways, we'll see y'all. Thank y'all for All coming. Right. Y'all have a blessed day. You know what? If you can mention him in the comments, to me too. We love to see people watch at us. Just jump in there, tell us everything you hate about life and the world. And we're not going to read it because we don't care. But we love that you're here with us.